Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm showing you how to paint this the red sleeve or Utsume Prugun Gutong inspired nail art design. This is a spring themed design focused on the love story of two real people. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, I'm applying base coat. I'm using a peel off base coat so that I can peel off my manicure and save it for memories. Then I'm going to be painting my thumbnail off white and the rest of my nails a clover green. In this video, I won't be walking through the painting process as much, I'll just be sharing the story. So starting off, the drama The Red Sleeve is based off of real historical records on the love story of King Jongjo Isan and court lady Song Do Gim. In the beginning, we see Song Do Gim finding Isan on his way to see his grandmother for the last time. The next day, he tries looking for this little girl that saved his life, um, that saved him from his grandfather, the current king's wrath because he wasn't actually allowed to see his grandmother. And from Togim's encounter with the king, we get a little insight into the grandmother and the life that she led up to her death. We learn that she was also a court lady with her sleeve stained red as a sign of belonging to the king and solely serving the king. So right away we get some foreshadowing as to what happens to a court lady when she becomes the king's woman. And then we fast forward to their teenage years where Togi meets Isan in the library but she doesn't know about his identity. Which leads to some funny interactions and Isan being mistreated for the first time and not knowing how to react. And when she finds out, she feels like she's been played but she can't do anything because she is his person. I think it was also at this moment that she really had some feelings towards him or at least was intrigued or touched by his actions, especially from him saving her from the tiger. And then we see Togim get more and more involved in his life once she is assigned to his quarters, which then leads to her swearing her loyalty to him until he gains the throne. And then she does everything in her power, sometimes risking her life to make sure that traitors and other people don't stop him from gaining the throne. In this way, she proves her loyalty and in some ways where she shows that she cares about Isan more on a personal level, it shows that she loves him. And this is where it becomes very confusing for Isan and he kind of embarks on this mission to make Togim his because her actions show that she cares, he feels that, but she herself says that she has no interest in him. Regardless, San tries to protect Togim whenever he can. One of the lines that left a big impression on me is from episode 1 where Togim tells Youngi that even though they're in such a low status, that she still wants to make decisions for herself and even if they're small, kind of trivial things, she wants to have control over them. So you can see that in some ways Togim wants to be her own person but she also has sworn loyalty to the king and she knows that she belongs to him. And Isan's feelings for her grow more and more and kind of become a little controlling, stopping her from having those freedom. So she is then stuck with choosing between herself and her love, which is obviously really difficult. No matter how many times she tried to turn away Isan after his confessions, she on the inside of course loved him and she wanted to hold on to him and to be with him, but being with him meant that she would lose herself and that is also too much to lose. We see this really come into play when she actually becomes his royal consort at the end of the series. She tells So Sang Gung that she already knew that Isan or the king would not be hers, that she was not the actual wife, and that all she could do was wait for him, but also not have any expectations. That she would live a life trapped in the palace while sending her friends off to their day trip. And on the flip side, we have Jong Jo's personal story being tragic as well, starting with him losing his father at a very young age, and then resenting his mother for having him killed. And now being the sole heir to the throne, he was of course put under a lot of pressure by his grandfather, and any time that he act different, from what he wanted or expected, then he would be punished verbally or physically. Moreover, when his dad was painted in such a bad light, he was also affected and as such, he just didn't have a good childhood. His best memory was probably when he sent off his grandma with Togim. But of course, Isan still grows up to be a great leader and he puts his people first. For him, the story becomes more about choosing between love and governance. His position as the king comes with many responsibilities. Even though he has so much authority in the land, he also has so many things he cannot do because of those responsibilities and those expectations. 
Towards the end, he becomes a little more aggressive and pushy towards Tolkien because he learns about that authority and how he can make anything he wants to be his. And so I think that's what actually leads to them spending the night together. For me, that wasn't totally consensual. It was very much coerced. Um, but I can also kind of see where Isan is coming from because he's been longing for her for so long and he also said to her that he can feel that she feels something for him but of course she always responds with a lie that she has never looked at him as a man she doesn't like him now and she won't in the future they have so much love for each other but being together also causes them so much pain individually Isan feels trapped because he can't get what he wants and Tolkien feels trapped because of her feelings So Tolkien does everything that she can to move away from the king to have him punish her properly, but it doesn't work out. Once she becomes royal consort, all she does is bear children. And Isan also has to choose between his duty and love because I'm sure he would love to spend more time with Tolkien looking after their children and just having good old times with her like when she was a court lady, but he now has to split some of the time governing, seeing her, and tending to the queen. He has a great sense of his duties and responsibilities and it's actually really tragic that he does because when his first child with Tolkien dies, he tells her that it's her duty to show up in front of the people and to show that they're strong however she responds that she can't do that because this is her child that came out of her belly that came out of her body and that she can't just pretend like it's okay and move on but Isan says that that's what she must do as a high-ranking royal consort and that's what he must do as the king all she wanted was time to grieve and to mourn for their child but she was left with these responsibilities that she didn't ask for. I know she died from cancer, but her life had just become so suffocating at that point from losing everything that she had as a court lady to then being forced to take on these responsibilities that she herself didn't know how to do and that she didn't really care for was just so much and took a toll on her mentally as well. This was just such a stark contrast to when she was literally running around the palace trying to save the crown prince and also from when she flew the kites so that he knew about the danger and literally ran into his arms afterwards. So unfortunately in the end Isan loses Togim and he's just left with all these doubts about whether she loved him back because on her deathbed she wasn't looking for him, she was looking for her friends and she asked for him to pass by her without looking at her or giving her any attention in their next lives. But actions speak louder than words and if you just look at the box of items that she kept a lot of them were from happy moments she had with Isan, and she also told him that she wishes to go see flowers with him again once they bloom after all this tragedy. So even though Isan had tried his best to forget about her and to move on with governing the state, he ends up in old age thinking about her and kind of reliving their memories. He actually never forgot about her, and so when we see that he passes away in his sleep, he ends up in a dream sequence that's a big what if. If he had just spent more time with Tolgim and didn't leave that day, he probably could have continued holding on to her and to never let go as he had promised. So I think the dream sequence was a way to satisfy viewers, but it was also a way to show that they loved in the wrong era and their social positions just prevented them from showing their love freely. And now in the afterlife, San knows that he should respect Tolgim, and in this twist, he asks her to love him back because he realizes that they don't have much time together and that he needs that validation because without it, he would feel so empty like he did for all those years while trying to forget about her. So they're back together at the annex or Pyrtang, which is his hideaway the place that he gifted her, and the place where they can love freely, and like that, the moment became forever. Now all you have to do is apply a generous layer of top coat. I also added matte top coat off camera. And that is it for my The Red Sleeve Osume Purugatong inspired nail art design. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed painting this colorful design. If you haven't watched the drama, definitely check it out. And that's it. I'll see you in my next one. Bye everyone!